Good, we're all set. Go. Hi, I'm Eloise Tunstall Behrens and I'm a composer. I think, I don't know, it just doesn't have that quite that movement that it did before. Just go in the middle of that vocal section. I just want to see what I was telling about volume. So, that's uh, just too, too loud would be... Actually, no, you can go. Okay, I'll just try it. That would be too loud. But... My, my role principally in most of the workshop and mentoring was to um, that destigmatize all the kind of privilege and, and inaccessibility. I'll move the, uh, the second before. And one. And then we can save the setting how you feel comfortable and then you jump travel to. Okay. So I'll shut up and let you practice that. I'll be very far. Yeah, I came for a, a week in the summer to use, well, to basically compose and compile the piece that I um, started. And I was really interested in um, kind of having sounds travel around the space, because um, I've been really influenced by the flocking motion of birds and kind of the idea of murmurations. So they kind of, you have to find the balance between inspiration, uh, empowerment and inspiration. So I, it has to keep this kind of magic thing, but it has to feel like concrete magic. Okay, I can, I can go, I can, I, can, I, can, I can do something, I can dream something. And then we help them realize their dream. They all expect that that is family. The water. That blood is the blood red water. Made, but it's hard the blood red. I am, I am looking, looking for a sense of belonging and connection. connection. My name's Sophie Cooper. I'm a musician, performer. I play trombone, play guitar, also do some singing. A sense of belonging. Just like a connection. That's okay. And then you write it. For yeah. The piece is called Intact, and I had this idea to work with a charity called Stand Alone, who are based in London. They're really small charity um, and they deal with adults who are uh, estranged from other family members and that comes in lots of different ways and it's a topic that lots of people don't talk about like when you when you don't have a relationship with a certain family member um, it's quite a difficult subject to talk about <laughs> So we had a year-long program. We did an initial search. We had an amazing number of applications, way more than we thought we were going to get, um, including from some people who were well beyond um, being emerging composers. Um, and uh, that program then developed over the course of the year. We had residencies at the Electric Spring Festival where we introduced the resources of the Huddersfield Immersive Sound System. Um, so the participants, there were five of them, um, learned about this speaker system, learned some basics of diffusion, um, and got to sit in on some rehearsals um, from some of the artists at the Electric Spring Festival in February. We then had some follow-up events in the summer this year where those five participants got to do longer in-depth work here, both with the full system as it was set up and also in our spiral lab, which is a 25.4 channel lab, which is a kind of smaller version of the, of the HISS. found out that most of the women identifying composers that came to Huddersfield didn't engage with large number of speakers. 
probably for many reasons, certainly not for one of not inclusion here. We always have a volunteer team and some students did engage, but the ratio was still very uh, uh, white male um, privileged. So we, as a first dent in the problem of access to this technology that is a beautiful musical instrument, or at least their musical potential to it, we said, okay, there is something that needs to be done. And Graham uh, McKenzie, the festival director, challenged us. And for years, I've tried with Liz Dobson to organize something as part of Electric Spring, but it's hard to make these things happen. Everyone's overworked. But then it kind of gelled, like every, all these, these things gel in one thing and say, okay, let's make it happen. My name is Georgia Rogers. Um, I'm a composer of instrumental and electronic music. When I was composing the piece, I knew it was going to be an installation. It's quite textural um, and it changes slowly over time. And I like the way that um, in an installation, people can kind of come and go as they like. There's no pressure. For this piece I also made two programme notes which have some photographs that I took whilst walking in the Cairngorms in Scotland and they also have a few lines, one verse, from a poem um, by Richard Skelton from a, a book called Beyond the Fell Wall. I already had some of the sounds but then I was reading this book and that verse really worked well with what I was thinking and it's um, the, the quote which the, the title of the piece comes from is that it's a line of parts or a subtle line of parts. So I was thinking about how things kind of work together to make a greater whole which is so the pictures in the program note one of them it's quite small scale, so it's pictures of like um, mosses and stuff in the Cairngorms. And then the other one's like completely other end of the scale, so it's the view from the summit of a peak and you can look out for miles around. So I find that contrast of scale quite interesting. So it's sort of replicated in the sound a bit in that the first half-ish is lots of small grains of sound. Um, and then the second half is sine tones, like long sweeping sounds. So that to me was a similar sort of contrast in scale, as it were, um, within the space. We all engaged with uh, what is possible to do, uh, but it's so much that is possible. You cannot engage with all that is possible, but they all took a subset and went with it. And that's great because that makes five different pieces, uh, each respecting their own personality, uh, yet uh, composing for a setup that they didn't have access to before. We acknowledge fully that there is a huge gap in terms of participation rates in composition and also in particular in music technology in terms of gender in, in our field. Saranam has been hugely committed um, to redressing those imbalances in all of our activities. And what our approach has been is to try and deal with that at three levels. So um, our, our view is we need to be doing that at an early education level, really dealing with um, quite young girls and providing opportunities to familiarize with technologies and also to provide really strong role models for developing um, approaches to music technology at an early age. Um, the second phase is something similar to what we've done here, which is for younger early career um, uh, musicians. Um, and so these are generally people who are either still um, working at university level or just beyond university level, but not yet with a kind of professional profile, so doing kind of educational work, professional development work, mentoring work. Um, and then finally, it's been really important for us that we're providing very strong, very clear role models um, at the highest level. Um, so really making sure we're profiling um, powerful, vibrant uh, female composers across, across the discipline and within composition and performance and also in, in music technology. Um, so there's this kind of professional element as well. What we're trying to do is provide a clear target, a clear model. So those girls who are doing those workshops when they're eight years old with the Yorkshire Sound Women Network or when they're 12 years old, see what the pathway can be. Um, and that there is a career for, for this. I think one of the things that our field has really struggled with is that you look in the side of a concert venue in Vienna and it's a bunch of marble busts of European men. Um, and providing models is absolutely crucial. It's one of the things that we're committed to.